Okay, well, you know, I think we'll just go ahead and get started. And I just want to begin by saying thank you so much for being here this evening, boys. Um, I think you're going to get some very good information. It, some of it may be sort of familiar for those of you that have worked with me on the ice or who have worked with me doing some yoga. But I think um, our presenter this evening is going to give you some new techniques that you can use to manage your energy, to manage your focus uh, on and off the ice. And just I'd like to introduce my friend uh, Todd Corbin. Todd and I have been friends for many years. Uh, we were in a friend's wedding. Uh, we didn't realize I think at the time we met a few years later, we were in a book club together. And one thing we have in common is we, in our own way, we are working with people to help, help them work toward their best versions. You've probably heard me say that. I talked about that, helping you be the best skater. Todd works with athletes. He's worked with business people. And it's all about being aware of what you hope and wish and desire and making your way to that hope, wish and desire by doing certain techniques. So Todd is going to talk a little bit about that this evening. And his, uh, he, is a, he is an avid runner. If you, if you looked at any of his uh, information that I had sent out, he's an avid runner. He's a sports enthusiast. He's been a coach. He's a mindfulness speaker, a mindfulness teacher, a motivational speaker. He's an author of the book that all of you have seen. I've been posting that um, mindfulness for the student athletes. And Todd, would you like to add to my introduction? No, that was great. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, the only thing I'll add is, is like all of you today, I was uh, student athletes and playing a lot of different uh, sports. Um, and the benefit that I wish I had somebody like me when I was your age or Chris, because just to give you a sense of, you know, the mental game, what does that mean? You know, how do you manage your emotions? How do you manage your thoughts? How do you take care of the six inches in between your ears, which is sometimes more important than because we focus so much on the body, right? So I have a question for you to start. Hopefully you like this question. It's pretty easy, but it's thoughtful and somebody's filming. So I love that. Okay. So anyway, where's your mind right now? Are you here? You probably get that at school a lot of times. Okay. Are you present? Are you here? Who's here? Show of hands. Who's here? Okay. Our bodies are here, right? But is your mind here? Are you really here right now? Now, what were you doing before you came on this call? Maybe having dinner, maybe out with friends, maybe reading a book, watching something on Netflix, right? And maybe your mind is still over there, which is okay. But I'm asking you to put all that aside. And then that's just the past. You may be thinking about, you know what? I want to play Xbox live later on or Fortnite, right? Or do something. Maybe you haven't eaten yet. So that's the future. And again, the mind is a wandering mind. So what it basically means is unless you have something to keep it focused, it's going to drift away. So while you're playing on the ice, and maybe while you're on defense, and the game is all the way down on the other side of the rink, and you're just watching, maybe the mind can wander more then, right? Does that make sense? Or you're practicing, and you're doing the same drills over and over again, and your mind is drifting. So what we're going to talk about are some ways to bring you right here, right now. And why would that make sense? Why would you want to be what's called a mindful athlete? Why, why is that important? Do you realize, and I'm going to ask you another question. Okay, I have my little stress switch here. Okay, and I guarantee you probably haven't seen one of these before. But it's a way to check in with yourself. So this is a question that I'm going to ask, but I want you to ask for yourselves. Okay, where are you right now? 
in your level of stress in your body or in your mind? One to 10. You don't have to share it with anybody. Just kind of get a sense where you are. So is your stress all the way up, right? Kind of in the middle. I see some, uh, maybe, maybe there. Or is it low? Okay. And it's movable. So depending on the moment, depending on what we're doing, depending on the game situation, it's always moving. But it's important to notice where you're at, okay? And by noticing where you are at, you are being right here, right now. And this is really key. Do we like to feel stress? Who likes to feel frustrated? Anybody like to feel frustrated? You like to feel anxious? Memphis, you like to feel frustrated? Sometimes. Really? When my brother's being annoying. Oh, okay, got it. All right, so then you can get into it with him, right? All right, so that's a use of that. But normally, that's a frustration. We don't like to get into frustration too much. We don't like to feel anxious too much, right? Well, that's part of life. I mean, you live life and you go throughout your day. These are some emotions, these distressing kinds of things we're going to feel. But when you're here, when you're right here right now, noticing how you're feeling, you are not adding any more stress or tension or anxiety to the body. Isn't that amazing? So the only time you can add more stress to your body is when you are not present. So you get that? So when you are not right here, when your mind has wandered to the last play, maybe you, maybe you missed a shot, or if you're the goalie, you know, you, easy shot you missed. Or you just let somebody, you know, get in front of you and take the puck and go all the way down the, the rink. And you're like kicking yourself in the head. Are you right here? No, you're adding stress to your body. So what we're going to talk about in the next 35, 40 minutes are some mindful ways to get you right here, right now. And when you're right here, right now, your body's more relaxed. You can play more free on the ice. You can skate more easily. You'll have better stick skills. You'll be able to make better decisions. You'll be able to see all the players on the rink a little bit more clearly when you're right here. Okay? Does that sound good? All right. So I have a few slides I want to share with you. Not too many. So let me... Okay. So mindset. You ever hear the word attitude, right? Got to have a good attitude. Maybe your coach, maybe your parents tell you, oh, you have a lousy attitude. Why, why are you doing these things? Attitude is just another name for mindset. Okay. Mindset is how you see the world. It's like a filter. Okay. And however your mind is set is the way you'll see the world. You know, like optimists and pessimists, right? This glass is half full or half empty. That's a mindset. To me, it's half full, okay? Even when it's empty, it's still, in my mind, something more positive. But that's something I set ahead of time. And that's pretty cool. You can set your attitude and you could set your effort. These are things you can control. You might have heard that before. So mindfulness allows us to set our minds ahead of time before the game, before the practice, before you start your day, before you get into it with your brother over frustrations. You can set that ahead of time. Maybe you said, oh, I don't want frustrations. I want cooperation today. You can do that too. All right, so the other thing I want to share with you is that I want you to tell me how many times you have your A game, all right? 
that you're playing at 100% full out. You got your mind, you got your body, things are great. And that's how you're playing the whole game. How many? Show of hands. Anybody? Very rarely. Even the, the best of the best in the NHL, right? Sid Crosby never plays 100% all the time. It just doesn't happen, okay? But it may look like he's playing at 100% because even when he has 80% or 90%, maybe he's really sore from a double overtime, and an extra practice session and getting checked and you know hurting his ankle and all these things but he's giving a hundred percent of eighty percent okay so again mindfulness and setting things up ahead of time allow you to give more effort so you can get a hundred percent of your effort even if you don't have your physical body operating at the best level, all right? Even if like you're 60%. So that's what we wanna work towards because most of the time we're not in the zone. Most of the time, we, although we would love to be, right? Playing in the, in the highest state possible, right? But most of the time we're not, okay? And that's what separates the good athlete from the really good athlete, from the good hockey player from the really good hockey player is the ability to give full effort and energy when you only have 70%, okay? So I wanna share with you what I call the mindful anchors, and then we're gonna do an activity. All right, so there's five mindful anchors and I use this little acronym to be set, okay? Are there anybody that likes to do the face-off? Anybody? Okay, so if you do a face-off, right, you have to be read, seti, okay? You have to be ready and set to do the face-off, right? And then the puck, and then you go, right? You have to wait for the whistle or the command to go. And that's when the action starts. Same thing with mindful awareness, okay? You have to be ret, ready and set. And there are five ways to do that in mindfulness. All right, and you may have practiced some of these before. So the first mindful anchor, and these are what bring you right here, right now at your full power of a, a playing at your, at your top level. And that's the breath. And I'll share a couple of quick activities with the breath that we can do. And maybe, you know, and I'll give you a little acronym so that you can use it. But we breathe 20,000 times every day. The breath is always available, always here. You can use the breath to calm down. You can use the breath to energize you. You can use the breath to focus different parts of your body. So it's really a powerful tool. So the, and then the second tool, mindful anchor, is your body. So I want you all, no matter how you're sitting right now, I want you to sit up a little bit, okay? The physiology of your body changes how you feel. So for those of you that were lying back like this, it tells your brain, hey, it's as relaxed. I might fall asleep. But if you're sitting up, and I'm sure you've heard this a million times, right? Sit up, sit straight, right? But there's a reason for that because it tells your body, okay, be relaxed. But I want you to really feel your feet on the floor. I have a good friend, Graham Betchart, and he works with a lot of NBA players. And these are people making millions and millions of dollars, and he still tells them, feel your feet on the floor. Be where your feet are. So I want you to do that. And you can do it while you have skates on too, but I want you to feel your feet on the floor. Okay? And notice what's happening with your feet as you do that. And notice what's happening in your mind as you do that. Is your mind, are you right here? 
or you're thinking, why is he having us do this weird exercise to feel our feet? That's silly. But that choice, every time the mind <clears throat> drifts away, is to bring it back. And we can use the body. The feet is a great place to do that. You can always use your heart, because it's beating, hopefully, about 100,000 times every day. You literally, when you're skating to the bench in between periods, or there's a break in the action, you can just literally feel your heart and tune into that for one, two, three, four beats. That's all it takes sometimes. So the breath and the body, I mean, those are the two Bs. They're really powerful, okay? Then we have our senses. Our senses are amazing. So I want you to think about the last time you were on the ice, okay? Think about that. And while you think about it, in your mind's eye, imagine all the things that you felt on the ice, all your senses. What did you see? Just think about that. Imagine you're on the ice and you're looking around. What do you notice? What do you hear? All right, somebody share with me some of the things you might hear while you're playing hockey or practicing. Josh, yeah, go ahead. Josh H. I think there's a couple of Joshes here. Me drinking water. Okay, absolutely. That's a really good one. And we're going to talk about that. That's actually a beautiful thing. Um, okay, so let's see. Memphis, you wanted to share? Is that right? No, Matthew. No. Oh, Matthew. Okay. My Matthew. My coach talking. Your coach talking. Now, is that um, distracting or is that good? <laughs> That's good. Okay, good. Because sometimes coaches talking, they get, you know, it could be interrupting if they're talking to other players and they're getting a little heated with somebody else or hopefully not heated with you. But that's good. Absolutely. How about the sound of your, your skates on the ice? Stopping. That's, that's what I heard. Yeah. I yeah. How about the sound of the stick hitting the puck? There's a lot that you... How about feelings? The sensations, what you feel. You ever feel how cold the ice is? You ever get into that? You ever notice it? Some does it feel colder some places on the ice than others? Maybe if you're sweating, does it feel colder? That's an interesting thing. While you're sweating, you're hot, but you're on cold ice. So these are all things that you can tune into. Okay? You allow these senses to come to you. The sounds. There's smells on the ice too, I'm sure, right? Sweat, whatever the ice smells like. Skates digging in there, right? There's a smell after the Zamboni comes through, right? Fresh ice, okay? So there's all these senses. Tune into any one of those for a couple of seconds and you've just brought yourself right here, right now. And again, that's the place where you're going to play at your top level because you're not adding tension or stress or anxiety into the body. Okay? Not any, adding any more, I should say, because you, you might have some already in there. So the other thing we can do, the other mindful anchor, there's two more. Probably won't have time to cover them today, but I have some other classes that if you wanted to explore, go in a little deeper. The emotions. Okay? how we're feeling, right? Again, maybe you, maybe you want to feel frustrated. I don't really particularly like that emotion, but you can. You can choose to feel energized, right? Confident. What athlete doesn't like to feel confident, okay? Attitudes also to be appreciative and grateful. You can produce emotions ahead of time. 
And emotions are energy in motion, meaning that they move. They move through your body and they cause you to feel certain ways. Okay? So maybe we'll spend a moment when we get into uh, creating some positive emotional states later on. If we have time, we'll cover one exercise quickly in that. Okay, and then the last mindful anchor is thoughts. Remember this to be set model, T is thoughts. You have 60,000 every day. Did you hear that? 42 a minute, that's crazy. So on average, 42 a minute and about two thirds of your thoughts are not helpful. They are negative and that's no fault of our own. That's just kind of how the brain is wired. So if you thought about the last time you went on an airplane through security, have we all been through security? It may be a little while before, no? Okay, so you can imagine if you've ever been then in a place, you've probably been in an arena, right? to see maybe the calves or the Indians or the monsters or some, somebody play, and you gotta go through a metal detector, okay? So the metal detector is a device to notice potential threats, right? They wanna stop people that are threatening. And unfortunately, that's how our brain is wired. Our brain is wired to notice threats, and that is to keep us safe. And that's okay. It's good to be safe, right? We want to be safe. But it goes overboard a lot of times. And the reason that it goes overboard is because it's millions of years wired into our body. Let me stop the share. You don't need to see that anymore. Okay. All right. So that's the stress response. And because it moves to the negative, our thoughts move to the negative. So a lot of times we think things that are not helpful. So using a mindful anchor of a thought could be creating a word or a phrase in advance that you can focus on that anchor you into the ground, okay? Like if you imagine like a boat in, in the water, and this is kind of important. So imagine a boat in the water and it's anchored. So here's a question for you. Because a boat is anchored, does that prevent the boat from moving? No, okay, good, so you all know. So it prevents the boat from drifting, but the boat's gonna move. <clears throat> gonna move. And that's just like these mindful anchors. Your mind's gonna move around, but it's not gonna go too far because then you have an anchor where you can bring it back to right here. And so the more we play with this and notice when our mind has wandered away and notice, ah, it's over here, it's over there, it's in front, it's behind, I don't know where it is. But whenever you notice it and you bring it back using any of these anchors, even just your attention, a thought brings it back. Every time you do that, it's building a muscle. And it's just like going to the gym and lifting weights. Because when you lift weights of any kind or do push-ups or sit-ups, you don't just do one, right? And you don't just do one set of 10. You might do multiple sets. And you can't just go and do weights one day and then, ah, that's it, I got it, right? You can't go to the gym one day. You can't just lift weights. It's the same with mindful awareness. You can't just do it one time or one day. It's got to be practice, the reps. And it's the same with your skill in hockey, right? You're not going to just practice shooting one time. You're not going to practice your stick skills one time. You're going to do it day after day after day, right? And you want to get better at skating. You want to get better at developing your pace. All the coordination. Think about it. all the things that you're doing on the ice. I mean, you're skating. You're moving on skates, you're stopping, you're using your visual sense to see what's going on, where all the other players are, where the puck is, right? There's a lot going on. 
So then you add in stress and tension, makes things even more difficult already. So that's why we want to be right here right now. Because already what you're doing is pretty amazing. And you want to do it at a high level. All right? Good? Okay. Who wants to do a mindful practice that I call mindful sports anchoring? Okay. Good. So very simply, I want you to kind of feel right now what it's like to sit. All right, so just notice that. I mean, that's a silly question. How many times we sit? We sit in our bed, we sit on the floor, we sit playing video games, watching TV, right? Do you notice what it's like to sit? And the reason I'm asking you, and I don't want you to think about it, I want you to feel what it's like to sit. And just notice the muscles you're using. Feel the gravity, the force of gravity on your body. Feel it. When you feel it, you're right here, right now. That's the power of it. Okay? So wherever you are, look around your room, whether it's a room you've been in many times before, or maybe it's a new room for you. And just notice some of the things in the room that you see. And just acknowledge what you see. Just notice, ah, oh, okay, I see that. I see that on the wall. This is the color blue. Okay, this is a box. This is a clock. Just kind of go around, notice those things. Every time you notice something, you're just bringing your mind into focus and you're not adding stress or tension to the body. That's kind of the theme we're going at, right? So, all right. Now what I want you to do, and if you feel safe and, and comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. And if you don't want to, that's okay. Just pick a point out ahead of you about a couple of feet. But I want you just to start allowing the sounds that you hear to come to you. So just notice whatever you hear, okay? Notice the sounds. And notice when your mind wanders away, which is fine, because when it wanders and you bring it back, that's building that mental muscle, the mindful muscle. So see if you can listen to three or four different sounds. See if you can just notice three or four sounds. Okay, now I want you to start, and you may have already noticed the sound of your breathing, but I want you to tune into your breath. So again, you can keep your eyes closed and just really feel what it's like to breathe. Really feel the breath. Feel the breath as you breathe in. And notice how it feels as you exhale, as you breathe out. And as best as you can, and I'll watch the clock for the next 60 seconds, I want you to keep your awareness and your focus as best as you can on your breath. Just follow the in-breaths and the out-breaths.
So on your next breath, take one extra big inhale, an extra audible exhale, and just let it go. <sighs> All right. So I'm going to ask you to check in again on your stress. Just again, and see where you're at and notice how you're feeling in this moment. Okay. So who would like to share what that felt like? If it was hard, if it was easy, if the mind drifted away, if the mind is still away, who'd like to share? Okay, Aaron, go ahead. Um, it kind of felt like it felt comfortable. Okay. And like it was kind of easy, but once it drifted away, yeah. you just focus on bringing it back. That's great. Perfect. Wow. And did you find that the listening to the sounds or looking around was a little bit more helpful? Or when you then closed your eyes and were focusing on the breath, what did you find that made it more comfortable? Because I like that word comfortable. That's, that's terrific. Um, when I had my eyes closed yeah. and I was listening to my breath, mm -hmm. Um, I was also kind of feeling my feet and centering them on the floor. So that's great. Kind of noticing stuff. Wow. Brilliant. And that's, we'll talk about that. You jumped ahead. That's more advanced. That's great. See, you can actually, and we did this, but not at the same time. You can use multiple anchors to really ground you in the moment. So when you're getting really upset about something, or angry or, you know, feeling uncomfortable or anxious, really nervous. And it's okay to feel nervous. Those, you know, the, you know, you, you want to feel tension in your body before a game. You don't want to be so calm that you go out there and you're like, oh, goodness, I don't know how I'm going to skate today. I'm just so relaxed, you know. You want to have some level of competitive drive, right? You want to dominate on the ice, right? Okay. But putting these together, that's brilliant. Really great. Okay, one more person. I want one more person to share what that experience was like for them. Okay, Lily, I see a hand up. Um, I felt um, relaxed and I felt calm and I felt good. Good. Good is a good word. I like that. <laughs> Do you, um, did you notice if when you were doing the, the breathing, was the, how different was that for you than using the senses? Um, it was pretty different because when I was using my senses, um, I felt that I was focused on a few different things, but when I was breathing, I was mostly focused on just my breathing. Ah, and did you notice your mind wandering at all? Um, it wandered a few times when I was breathing. And were you able to bring it back? Yeah. And how did you do that? Um, I just kept thinking about how, um, when the air was coming in, my nose and out my mouth. Yeah, that's great. See, the more we feel it, the breath. Thank you, Lily. That's really good. So and I like that word, good. So we got comfortable and good. I love it. Um, and calm. So that's what we're trying to get at here. When we, when we use these mindful anchors, and if you realize that we, we hit on on the senses, we hit on on the body because I had you feel, you know, your, your weight of your body seating, sitting down, you know, and some people added, you know, Aaron added the feet while he's breathing. You can add how your hands are, you know, when you're holding the stick, 
you can feel that as you skate. There's multiple parts of your body that you're feeling. And you'll be more focused. You can really maintain your focus. And sometimes it's easy to get distracted. But when you're engaged with more anchors and you're in the moment, your mind is going to be here. And you're going to be able to focus more. And then the great thing about it is, because obviously the play on the ice doesn't stay in one area, right? It may for a few moments. And if your team is, is playing really well, hopefully it's on the offensive side most of the time, right? But if not, then, you know, it's on, on the defensive side. But your mind will then be able to shift more quickly. That's really a wonderful thing, too. It's not just about focusing. It's about moving your focus and changing your awareness. So these mindful anchors help with that, too. Just like you're building that muscle and the mind goes away while you're breathing. Ah, I notice it. Let me focus back on the inhale, the exhale. The mind drifts away. I focus on my feet. The mind goes away. I focus on the sound of my skates on the ice. All these things that you can use that you're already doing, right? You're just changing what you're focused on. And so that's the brilliant thing about mindfulness is because you're not doing anything differently. You're just noticing it in a different way. Okay? Good. All right, so I'm going to share with you one of my favorite words. I created a new word. All right? I don't know if it, it might be your favorite word after you see it. Okay? And it's called tabify. Can you see that? Whoop. Tabify. And it's a verb and has four definitions. All right? And this is a way for you to use your breath in a little different ways each time you focus on it, okay? And I want to share with you, I don't even know if, Chris, I've shared this with you before, but it's, it's really helpful um, when you think about it. All right, so the first definition of Tabify, again, it's a verb for breath, and they're all in the same language, right? Take a breath. And the first one is to feel it, okay? A lot of times we take a breath and we think about breathing. And that, well, while we breathe, the body is already automatically, especially when we exhale, it's going to help start releasing, I call our body's own parachute. All right. And somebody didn't like the turtle, I, I guess. But anyway... So the body's own parachute is the parasympathetic nervous system. And if we can feel the breath and feel it on the exhale, that helps calm us down. And that is one of the ways that we feel it. All right? So we can also take a breath and finish it, tabify. Take a breath and finish it. So what does that mean? A lot of times you take a breath, right? Do that now. Take a breath. Sometimes you just go, right? Take a breath. Ah, no. All the way through. Finish it. That's actually the most important part of the breath is to finish it fully. So when you do that, again, you're engaging that parachute in the body. All right? Now I'm going to share with you something that I don't think you may have realized Take a breath and focus it. So you can actually move your breath to different parts of your body. Did you know that? So you can actually feel that. So I want you to do this again. We're feeling our feet on the floor, right? Now you won't be able to draw on my turtle, right? <laughs> okay. So feel your feet on the floor. And as you breathe, I want you to imagine the energy of your breath. As you breathe out, you're sending the energy of the breath down through your feet. And as you breathe in, it's coming back up. So take a few breaths and breathe in and through your feet. See if, what that feels like for you.
Now I want you to shift your focus to your thighs, okay? Your big leg muscles. When you're on ice and you're skating a long time, they get really tired, don't they, right? You'd say they burn, right? So I want you to feel the breath moving in and through your big leg muscles, okay? Your thighs, your hamstrings, okay? So take a few breaths and focus the breath in and through those areas. Okay, and I got one more for you, all right? So I want you to feel and focus your breath in and through your heart, okay? So even if you have to put your hand on your heart like we're doing the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? Or the National Anthem. I want you to feel and focus your breath as you breathe in and through the heart, okay? See if you can do that for seven breaths. Okay, good. All right, who wants to share what that was like to move the breath around the body? Were you able to do it? Did you feel it? Was it like, I have no idea what he's talking about. I mean, any, any of those responses are okay because there's no right way to do this, all right? So who wants to share? Just Tell me what it was like to feel, could you feel the breath moving through your thighs and your hamstrings or your legs or your heart? Lily. It felt good because um, it kind of felt like tingly for some reason. Cause, cause when I thought about like the breath going to my feet and my hamstrings and my heart. Um, I just kind of thought about how it was going in and it kind of felt tingly. That's great. That's a good noticing. Wow. So there's a lot of energy moving through your body, right? You have a hundred trillion cells in your body. It's an incredible amount. I mean, you got a lot in your brain, you got a lot in your heart, you got a lot in your gut, but all throughout your body you have all these cells and things are moving, your blood is flowing, oxygen is flowing. So the tingling feeling that you're feeling, Lily, that's great to notice that because it might feel differently in different parts of the body. It might tingle more or less. It's the energy moving through the body, right? And when you tune into that, again, what happens? When you tune into that feeling, brings you into the moment right here. So you're not adding any more tension to the body at that moment. That's great. Okay, good. I'm, I'm looking, how, how are we doing on time, time master? <laughs> we okay? About five uh, more minutes? About, yeah, about five more minutes. Okay, all right, sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna share one more mindful anchor with you, but that's really great. So we really hit on the breath. So remember that word tabify, okay? Take a deep breath and feel it, focus it, follow it, okay? and finish it, okay? So the last thing I wanna share with you, Oop. here we go. And somebody mentioned this at the beginning. So this is a mindful practice. And I don't know if everybody has a water bottle or a drink with them. I did see a few people, and if you don't, that's okay. You can do it when we're done, all right? But if you have a glass or something, or you can even imagine, do this as, as, we, as we do it. So I always like to leave a practice where you kind of do it on your own. 
and it's something you already do, right? So if you know mindfulness, you may have had people say, well, you do some mindful eating, which is like taking a mindful bite of something, chewing it and noticing how it feels and one bite at a time. But you don't have food on the rink very often, do you? But you have a water bottle, right? You always have something to drink and you are going to get, you know, I don't know how many timeouts and how many in-betweens, but you're going to be using your water bottle at least, I don't know, four, five, six times during a game or a practice, maybe more, right? So each time you use it is an opportunity to bring yourself in the moment. And we talked about the senses already. And the beautiful thing about mindfully drinking a sports drink or water or whatever it is you have in front of you, I did this a few days ago with a couple of student athletes and uh, one of the kids who plays basketball, he had fruit punch. And so he had a big container of fruit punch he was drinking from. And he did this activity. He's like, Coach Todd, I can't believe, because he did, he's like, I never noticed how sweet this fruit punch is. He's like, it's almost too sweet. And he had to put it down, okay? See, what's going to happen is you're going to notice more of what's going on. And a lot of times we just do things, force a habit, we're busy. I mean, who really wants to pay attention to what we're eating and drinking, right? We have all these things to watch, right, on our screens or at the same time, or we're talking to people or we're doing something, right? So, you know, you could be reading something or, you know, just kind of wolfing down a quick lunch, a sandwich in the back of a car, right? So this is a way to really use something that you're already doing, which is drinking, but to do it in a different way, just with awareness, okay? So for those of you, hold up a drink if you have a drink. Again, if you don't, that's okay. That's fine. You can do this as soon as we're done, all right? But just you'll see how easy it is because you've had a drink how many times today have you had a sip of something, right? So you already know the process. This again, it's just a little different. Okay, so before you do it, before you drink something, before you hold your water bottle and take a drink, just notice it, okay? So obviously I have water here, but I want you to notice like how it feels in your hand. Is it heavy? Can you feel the temperature? This glass is pretty cold, right? Can you feel that? Maybe you're on the ice and it's a sweaty bottle, right? You might be able to feel that. Even through your gloves, you might even be able to feel it. It might be a little slippery. So just notice that. Again, you're engaging more senses, allowing you to be in the moment. Again, we're talking like one or two seconds that you're noticing these. I'm just talking you through what we're doing. So it seems like it's taking longer, right? Okay, and look at it. Look at the color, right? Well, all these sports drinks or if you got something in a bottle, you know, look at the bottle, silver, maybe you have a straw, maybe it has, you know, an automatic stopper that you have to push and hold up. So notice how that sounds, you know. And notice as you're holding, if you do have a water glass or something to drink, before you're drinking it, notice what's going on in your mind. Notice what's going on in your mouth. So maybe you're noticing that I'm not taking a drink, but now my mouth is becoming more alive. It's really cool. My mouth is getting ready to drink, even though I haven't had a drink. But if you just take a quick drink, you don't notice that. Ah, isn't that interesting? Okay, it's just the way our body is. So now what I want you to do is I want you to take a drink but I want you then to follow and feel, just like we did the breath, the liquid again that you have. Feel it going down your body and see if you can follow it. And you, can you feel it still moving through your body? Can you feel that? Can you feel a difference in temperature in your body? 
Maybe. Again, there's no right way to do this. It's just how we do it. It's just what we notice. So then I want you, for those of you who have a drink, I just want you to drink it really fast and just notice that. And be done with the drink. Now, is there any difference there? Again, it's what you put your attention on. This is changing your mindset, right? I want my mindset to be able to pay attention when I say I want it to pay attention, okay? That's the difference. Your mind will pay attention to something, all right? So not just about attention. It's about your ability to focus your attention. And it's not even about that. That's like half. So you can be aware about these things, your breath, your body, your senses will be done in about a minute here. Your breath, your body, your senses, right? But it's what you do with that awareness and that makes the whole difference, okay? So you're gonna see, be able to see more on the ice, but just to notice what more on the ice, where the puck is, you know, the way great Wayne Gretzky, they would say he would not skate where the puck is, but where it would be going. And he would have that intuitive sense. And he was one of the greatest ever because he had that ability. He was very mindful, very present, very aware, okay? That was the choices, the decisions that we make when we're mindful, all right? So it's been a pleasure, a privilege. And remember two things. Remember the to be set, all those mindful anchors, the breath, the body, the senses, the emotions, and the thoughts, okay? Those ground you in the moment. Remember the word tabify, right? Take a breath and finish it, follow it, focus it, all these things, okay? And then remember you're on your own practice. For those of you who didn't have it, at least once in the next day, drink mindfully, all right? So I thank you all. Thank you, Todd. That was awesome. I think you gave all the players at least one, if not three to five things that they can be doing to be more present and to manage their thoughts, their emotions, and their focus. So that was awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. And thank everybody for sharing, those that shared some great, great awarenesses. You know, really, really great. And players, again, thank you all for your commitment to your development this summer because this has been, you know, we've done a lot of time, you know, a lot of extra things that you would normally have not done for your body and now for your mind. So you guys are awesome. I know it's Sunday night and you probably want to go out and maybe run around for a little bit. So go do that. And I will see some of you tomorrow, uh, Yoga for Skaters. Okay. Have a great night. And again, thank you, Todd. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.